thank you for coming to church today. The title of my sermon is Waiting on the Lord. Before I go on to the sermon, I'd like to tell you a story. In 2015, in America, there was a young man. His name was Billy. He was 23 years old. He was married to a very beautiful lady called Mary. Mary was 19 years old, very beautiful and young. Billy was unfortunate in life. One day, when he went out for a party with his friends, he was wrongly accused of committing a crime. They said he raped another woman. Billy was brought to the courts. He had some difficulties in proving his innocence. And he was put in jail. For the first few days, his wife came to see, to see him. And Billy told Mary that I'm going to fight to clear my name and I'll return back to you. Mary agreed to wait for Billy. After a year of fighting the courts, Mary had no patience to wait for Billy. Mary went on to get married to another man. Six months after that, God worked her wonders and Billy cleared his name and get out of jail. It was supposed to be a moment of happiness and laughter when Billy got home, but it wasn't because his, his wife Mary had gone. Let's open our Bibles on Exodus 3 verse 4. I'll start reading. So when the Lord saw that, he turned aside to look and called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Verse 5. And he said, Do not draw near the place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and, they, and have heard their cry because of their tax masters, for I know their sorrows. Let's jump to page to verse 10. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So when you look at this verse, we are looking at Moses and God. God is talking to Moses, and he's saying to Moses, I have seen the oppression of my people, the children of Israel. I've heard their cries. I know their sorrows. God today is the same God that spoke to Moses, the same God that spoke to Abraham. He's saying to you today, I have seen your oppression. And I don't know what is oppressing you. Is it physical or mental health? Is it your marriage that is not working? Or you are not happy? Is it your boss who is trying to fire you from work? I don't know whatever is oppressing you. I don't know whatever you are going through. But what we know is God is watching you. God is aware of everything that is happening in your life. The only thing that you need to do is to cry out to God. 
Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. So now you need to tell Jesus about your problems and he will hear you and he will come and deliver you. In the same passage again, we hear God is calling Moses. He's calling him to give the job. He's telling him, go and take my children out of Egypt. In this church, Pakenham Church, we need deacons, elders, Sabbath school teachers. God is calling you today. Today, God is calling you to come to be a deacon. God is calling you to be an elder. God is calling you to be a Sabbath school teacher. We go back to what Moses said to God. Moses was frank with God, and he asked God, who am I to go to Pharaoh? And yourself, you might be asking yourself, who am I to do God's work? Who am, who am I to be a deacon? Who am I to be an elder, to be a Sabbath school lesson? Remember, God knows you. You are the right person for any job that God wants you to do. God is the one who provides all the talents. So don't look at you and be scared. Looking at Moses, maybe we don't know what has happened in his head when he asked these questions. Maybe he was scared. Maybe he thought that he had more sins. Remember, Moses killed a person in Egypt. Maybe he looked at these sins and said, oh, I'm not worth it to do God's work. But God, he doesn't choose anyone to work for. He just takes anyone to work for him. So God is asking you to work for him. Maybe Moses was scared to go and see Pharaoh. Maybe he was scared. And yourself, you are scared because you think that you've got some limitations in your life, that you can't do God's work. But to tell you the truth, God wants you to work for him. Maybe in this church, there might be someone who hasn't chosen God, who hasn't chosen Jesus as his personal savior. And this is the chance now. God is calling you to surrender your life to Jesus. He's calling you to give your life to Jesus. And if you feel that you want to give your life to Jesus, you can come and talk to Danny, the elder, or you can talk to me, or to any member of the church. And if you feel that there are some activities in the church, some duties, some roles in the church that you want to, to do, please just go and, take, and talk to, to Danny or to me or to the pastor. God will give you the strength to do all those roles. So after God spoke to Moses, Moses accepted God's call. He went out to Egypt. He went with Aaron, spoke to Pharaoh. But God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh did not allow the children of God to leave Egypt. And, Pharaoh, and, and God brought plagues, ten plagues or troubles in Egypt. He performed miracles. The reason why he performed those miracles, ten of them, was to convince the Egyptians so that they can see that the God of Israel is the really God, the God who cares, the true God. But after performing all those miracles, did the Egyptians see that God was the really true God? They did not see. Then on the last plague, this is the time that Pharaoh softened his heart. All the firstborns that belonged to Egyptians, they died. All the firstborns of the animals, they died. But no person died in the house of Israel. No animal died in the house of Israel. God did all these things to show the difference between the people who follow him 
and the poor doesn't follow him. You show the difference that if you follow God, you'll be protected. The same applies to us today. If we follow him, he will protect us. But if we don't, he won't protect us. So Pharaoh allowed the children of Israel to leave Egypt after the final plague. They left Egypt. But he wasn't happy. He followed the children of Israel. When the children of Israel reached the shore of Red Sea, they looked back and saw Pharaoh and the Egyptian army in chariots and horses pursuing them. The Bible says Pharaoh took 600 chariots. So there were many soldiers that were following the children of Israel. And we need to be aware that during those days, the Egyptian army was the most powerful army in the world. Just like there's no country that will be willing to see Americans coming to their country for war. No. The, every country is scared of America. So when we are just giving an example of, of, of a strong army, Egypt was just like America. They had all the artillery, they had all the weapons, powerful weapons. And the, Is the Israelites, do they have any weapons? Were they soldiers? They just lay people slaves. That's all what they knew, just to be slaves, not to fight. And they were very scared when they saw that the soldiers are coming. Look, even yourself, if, if, if it was yourself, what are you going to react? In front of you, there's a, there's a sea, a red sea, full of water, you can't cross it. Behind you, there is a soldiers, there are soldiers coming towards you. You are trapped. They were scared. What do they do? That's the time that they thought of, of God. The Bible says they called up upon the Lord. After calling upon the Lord, they spoke with Moses and they accused Moses. We told you, you should have left us in Egypt. It was going to be better for us if we've died in Egypt than to die in the wilderness. So when you're looking at this scene, you need to look at yourself. That the Red Sea and the Egyptian army, they represent the trials and tribulations in our lives. There are times when we are at the Red Sea and we are faced with these trials and tribulations. And we have to be very careful when we are in the trials and tribulations. Because the devil is a liar, he doesn't say anything good. And he has got no mercy. He uses his people to achieve his goals. So the devil is going to use his people to achieve his goals. He is going to, term, he's going to term, torment you. He doesn't care how much you fall. He doesn't care how much you lose. He never back up. He never go back. He never surrender. Devil never. He keep on causing troubles in your life. But there's only one way you can do is to call upon God. Call upon Jesus Christ. So Moses, when he was faced with the Red Sea, he spoke to God. Before he spoke to God, he reassured the children of Israel and said to them, God is going to fight for you. After speaking to God, God told him to raise his hand over the Red Sea. And the Red Sea, the water in the Red Sea parted and created a dry path, a dry path in the Red Sea. So the children of, Mo of Israel, they went inside the Red Sea, they traveled on the dry land. It wasn't an easy journey, it was a journey of one night to travel across the Red Sea. And Pharaoh and his army, when they see the dry land, they also got in, in the dry land, to pursue the, the Israelites, to bring them back. They got inside. They traveled too. In the morning, God looked at the Egyptian army, and he troubled the Egyptian army. 
Do you see how God works? He trampled the Egyptian army. He removed the wheels from the chariots. And the chariots had difficulties in moving. The Egyptians, they looked at each other and said, Truly, God is fighting with the Israelites. The Lord is fighting against us. God is fighting for the Israelites and is fighting against us. Let us flee from the face of the Israelites. Can you imagine that? These are the people that are just going their way. They are looking forward. And the enemy behind them is now retreating without them fighting back. On their own, they are going back. They are retreating. That's how powerful God is. So when you are faced with a lot of temptations, of troubles in the, on earth, don't go anywhere. Just go to Jesus Christ. Tell him. Once you tell him, and you take, you take charge of your life, the devil will back off. Remember, the devil doesn't back off. Only, he only backs off when Jesus intervenes. When he intervenes, everything will be calm. You cross the river, you cross the sea, the Red Sea, you cross it. Many times, many, people, many times when people, they face the Red Sea in their lives, they are tempted to go back. Don't give in to the devil. He will never help you. Never ever give in to the temptations. Never ever give in to the devil. He is a liar. He will never help you. Just focus on Jesus. Wait on Jesus. Now, let's move on to Exodus 19. I'm going to read. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on the eagle's wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my, com my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the, these are the words which, which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered, answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. So when you look at these words, God is going back to his people and saying, if you keep my commandments, he told them that I've removed you from bondage, from Egypt, the same way that God has done to us. He has done wonders to us. And now after doing all the wonders to us, helping us, God is saying to us, if you keep my commandments, I will treasure you. And the people said, yes, yes, we'll keep your commandment. They agreed. And this agreement was a covenant. The same applies to us. On the day of our baptism, the pastor will read the 20 commandments. And after reading the 20 commandments, he will ask you, raise your hand if you will keep these 20 com 10 commandments. You read the 10 commandments, and after that you say, if you are going to keep these Ten Commandments, raise your hand. We raise our hand, our right hand. Rising of that right hand and praying, we are making a covenant to God that we are going to keep your Ten Commandments. And when you make a covenant, you don't go back from it. No matter how difficult it is, you don't go back. So we, we have got no choice but then to keep on believing in Jesus Christ.
And the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 41, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now let's move on with the children of Israel and see how they are going. Let's open our Bible verses. Exodus 20, Exodus 32, verse 1 to 5. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the men, who, the men who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, This is your gold, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is the feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered the burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So we can see from this passage what kind of people were the children of Israel. In Egypt, the Egyptians, they had their own gold. The gold that has got a small, a small letter, not a, a capital G, but a small G, that's gold. That's an idol. They worshipped the bull, the calf. There were many gods in Egypt. So these children of Israel, some of them, not all of them, their minds are back in Egypt. Because Moses did not return in time, they had no patience to wait for Moses. And they had to make an idol to be their god. How quickly did they forget? A few months down the line, they were in Egypt, and God performed wonderful miracles. At the Red Sea, they saw what happened there, but they forgot all those wonders that God has done. A few days ago, they made a covenant with God that they will do all what God had instructed them to do. They were given the Ten Commandments, and one of the commandments was not to worship idols. But now, they are breaking all those rules, the covenant. They forgot all about God. They forgot all about what God has done for them. Sometimes in life, we are like the children of Israel. We forgot about God's help about his, his powers and wonders. My prayer for you is, when you get in troubles, please don't forget God. He's there for you. When you look closely on this verse, you will see that the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they did not believe in God. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them, they did not believe in God. But what did they do? They followed Moses. It's the same with us in the church. Some people, they don't believe in God. They follow other people. They follow the pastors. They follow their friends. But that is good anyway, because maybe by following those people, we may find God. But I would like to encourage you not to just follow, but to believe in God, to trust in him. Because if you just follow, if these people are taken away from your life, you go back to a sinful life. When you're looking at the gold that were in the ears of the children of Israel, 
You know what we think? We're thinking of our life here. When you go out here in the world, here, there's those earrings, gold earrings, or those earrings that you see there, you know, those are different earrings from the earrings that were being worn by the children of Israel. The earrings that the children of Israel were wearing were a possessions that they were given by God. They're not just earrings. God has given them those possessions. So, some of you may wonder, hey, I think he's just lying to us. That's true, those earrings were possessions. Let's read the Bible. Open your Bibles on Genesis 15, verse 13. This is God is talking to Abraham. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will inflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they will save, I will judge. Afterwards, they shall come out, of, out with great possessions. These are the possessions. They will come out with great possessions. So the children of Israel, they came out with great possessions. Looking at this gold, it wasn't a small gold. Remember, this gold was large enough to make a calf. So that was a lot of possession, a lot of wealth. So the question today is, how do you use God's possessions that gives, gives you? What, what do you use? How do you use your possessions that God gave you? How do you use your wealth that God gave you? How do you use your gift, your intelligence? How do you use it? Do you use it to glorify God? Or do you use it to create idols in your life? And if you worship the idols, the God won't be happy. If you use your gift that God gave you to go against God's will, God is not happy. Let's see what God does when you worship the idols. Let's open our Bible verses. Exodus 20, 32, verse 9 to 10. And the Lord said to Moses, I've seen these people, and indeed it is stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and, I'm, and I may consume them, and I will make, I will make of you a great nation. God wasn't happy with the children of Israel for worshipping other gods. He wanted to destroy them. But when you read this verse, Going down, Moses pleaded with God and said, No, God, please may you feel pity for these people. Forgive them. And God forgave them. Now let's read what God says about worshiping the idols. Some people may think that idols don't exist anymore. People have got idols in their homes, different idols. Some, the idols who come, they're wealthy, they worship the wealth and God. Let's open Exodus 20, verse 1 to, 5, verse 1 to 6. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a craved image any likeliness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. May God bless his way. Amen.